Okay, so once you're in the um, page, uh, you will have to create a virtual machine. And over here in Digital Ocean, it is called a droplet. Um, what we have to do is click on create uh, droplets. Create our droplet. So first of all, we choose our region. I believe usually we go for the region that we're closest to. Uh, I'm just going to select uh, San Francisco. And next. We have to choose the um, operating system that we want. So, but for this tutorial, we're just going to use Ubuntu and the latest bus version, which is 22.10. And next is the size. So if you want to have a lot of computing power, a lot of storage, uh, it will cost more. Just choose the cheapest option which is this one, the um, lowest tier, 512 megabytes um, because I'm, we're not doing anything intensive. Storage is the next one, 10 gigabytes is enough. We are going to use a password to connect. So let me just type my password in. Alright, uh, so after that part, we are going to go to, um, there are some additional options we can choose. And lastly is to finalize the details. We're going to deploy just one droplet and we can give a host name. So any name that you want to give, and you remember, I'll just say demo VM. And lastly, create droplet. Uh, it's gonna take a while before your VM is spinned up and you can um, the really the main part of this video. So um, we'll check back in when my VM is ready. Alright, so you can see the VM is ready. It will tell us it's ready when it's ac active and it's a green dot. The thing that we want is this this is an IP address. This is what we need for the SSH to know we are going into the server. So copy that. And now we're going to move to the terminal. All right, now that you have gotten your um, IP address, and the first time when you log in, type in SSH root at your IP address. So something like this and you click enter and it will ask you for your password so go ahead and do that all right so after you type in your password the first time when you've entered in you will ask you if you want to connect uh, if you want to say yes uh, this is just for the first time since this is a new IP address then you will see this information here which just tells you it's a welcome page it tells you your system load your usage memory and the first thing we're going to do is to create a user we should always create a user and log in into that so what we have to do is to say at at user and the name of the user use any name you want um, just make sure to remember the name our name is um, salad then we click enter and something else to create a password so I'm just gonna do that all right so after um, creating a password it's gonna ask you for some details uh, feel free to add them in if you want and lastly it's gonna ask you if it's correct if it's correct say yes for why you no. Know, press n and type it again and now you have created a user uh, after you create a user, you need to give them some privileges, some administrative privileges, so um, the user can um, perform tasks. What we have to do is go press user mod dash a g sudo and the username you have, you have that you have created. Uh, mine is salad. And next, we have to set up a firewall now you can type in ufw allow for oh, oops allow and 
SSH and this means that it's updated uh, you can also check what are the apps UFW app list and um, open SSH is the only application to confirm the this uh, we have to do UFW enable to enable and we press enter yes uh, we can check the status of it see what's going on and see that we want to SSH into our user to do that we have to first exit out and we say SSH um, our username then we say at this would be our IP address again so after entering our password we are going to download some to have everything we need to run our Flask app and deploy our Flask app first step we have to say a sudo app update to ensure everything is updated an update is complete so we're gonna do a sudo app install python 3 pip and now we're gonna have to create a virtual environment and what you can do is sudo app install python 3 vn vnv the next part is to get our files into the server get the files from my github repo uh, you can choose to use something like filezilla to um, send the files over to server from your local machine all right so i hope you have downloaded transferred uploaded your files that you need and we have to go into this folder, do some additional stuff. So you say CD, Flask template, requirements.txt, which has um, all the um, packages that we need. Firstly, we have to activate our virtual environment by um, saying Python 3 dash M. We are creating a virtual environment. We're just going to and I'm just going to call my virtual environment virtual environment to um, activate it by um, typing in source our virtual environment name bin activate and do a pip install all the requirements so it's a pip dash pip install dash r requirements.txt and next we're gonna pip install wheel and um, we have to also install gunicon green unicorn once everything is completed we are going to make sure that our app works in the server and first of all going to have to allow for port 5000 I have to say sudo UFW allow this port 5000 type in python app.py this means that it is um, running running on our IP address and port 5000 paste this in and we can see that it is working so next that uh, we can just control C to stop it we have to create a WSGI entry point. Um, I'm going to use Vim to create this file. Vim WSGI.py. Click enter. Press I to edit. And we're going to say from. So our app, our file is called app. So from app, import the app if name equals to main colon enter app dot run close brackets save it all right now we're going to configure the green unicorn green unicorn dash dash bind 0.0.0.0 
colon 5000 and WSGI colon app this is the app name and press enter starting and it is listening at a page you go back to our um, page and do a refresh if it's loading if it's showing what it needs to show then it means that probably set up this step can move on I'm just gonna control C to stop it we have ensured that our flash app is working as expected we can go to the next step um, now we don't need to have the virtual environment because we have ensured that already let's so cd back to the root directory we're going to create a service file and to create a file we say sudo vim and we're going to create it at etc dash system next we have to create a service file which is a systemd file what this does is it tells our um, system that we have this service that we want to run which is our flask app and how to run it give it providing information like um, where's the virtual environment located um, how to start the application and whenever this is system is booted up or something like that it will run in the background it, you don't have to um, deal with it after you have closed this server to start off we will need the unit portion beginning with the description uh, this is just to say tell you what it's doing when in the later steps you look at the status you know what this service is for i would say flask app and next is the after we will need the network.target unit afterwards is the main part the service part user it would be salad you will know that where where is this found in it's in the salad user group would be www-data next is the working directory where is it found in directory equals to dash home dash salad dash flask template for me it this depend this part depends on what you name your directory to be and the virtual environment the environment that would be path equals to dash home dash salad dash flask dash template dash v e m v this one is what you name your virtual environment to be and dash bin like so close it now how to start you need to tell the system how do you start this flask app and you have to use the unicorn giri unicorn so that is home dash salad dash flask template slash our virtual environment slash bin slash green unicorn and deploying the workers we will do three might you might have to play around with the settings if you run into issues like out of memory decreasing it might help dash next we do a dash bind unix colon my app dot sock dash m zero zero seven wsgi colon app lastly install this is wanted by multi user dot target 
before saving always check that the details the information are correct afterwards save this file and we can move on to the next step and it's asking for a password and it's authenticated and can start again uh, start enable then we do the status check again all right and now you can see that um, our application is active and it is running it's all working well so there are some cases where um, it is failing some reasons might include maybe there's a typo in your service file so you want to double check and see if uh, you've written it correctly some is the um, you yeah, might run into something called OOM and that means that it's out of memory you can um, reduce the number of workers that you have deployed so if you wrote 3 you might not try 2 and 1 and see that if that works if not if it doesn't work and you have ensured that your Flask app is um, working well you might have to look into increasing your memory, your CPU memory of the virtual machine. But ours is working, it's active and it's running, so we can continue to the next step. Sometimes you might want to do the status check again because it might run, then it will not run during the subsequent steps, for example, out of memory. We will check again that it is uh, running. So we are all good. And next we're going to configure the engine X part. So to do that, we need to install uh, engine X into our machine. So sudo app install engine X. And now we're going to um, allow the service because you have downloaded something new. You can see what we have by doing a sudo ufw app list. Um, for now, we're going to enable engine x http since our currently our app is um, we're doing its http to allow it. So same as the open ssh part, you can say sudo ufw allow engine x HTTP. Just check the status to make sure it's there. And yep, it's there. You might want to check our the status of Nginx to make sure that it is um, installed and it is active. So similar to the process we did just now. System CTL status nginx you see it's active and it's running the next step which is to uh, configure the nginx to um, allow pro a rev proxy request so we're gonna uh, create another file for this so we can say sudo vim i'm going to the nginx folder sites available the same as the service file so my app dot Conf. To write the conf file, we start with server, open close brackets, port we want to listen to, which is AT, semicolon, next the server name, this is the domain that we have registered, I'm gonna say literal nonsense.law, that is my domain name, literal, and we are gonna have the www. Dot one as well so just add that in front nonsense.log all right next the location right location slash open close brackets include proxy underscore params semicolon enter proxy underscore pass HTTP colon slash dash unix colon home I miss a slash 
salad slash my at slash my at dot colon semicolon uh, make sure that every time you write the end of something you have to add a semicolon in and I did not do that for my server name so I'm just gonna do that and we save the file after saving the configuration file the next command that we are going to do is sudo ln-s etc engine x sites available the name of the conf file minus my app dot conf space dash etc engine x dash sites dash enable this links the file to the sites enabled place after this linking type in sudo nginx dash t test it and if there is any errors you will have to do some troubleshooting before you can continue to the next step for me i did have an error which is i did not put the semicolon so i add it back in save the file and linked it again but this time when if you do the command of ln s it wouldn't work because it will say it's already linked you will have to say sudo ln dash s f so at a f and this would force it to update the file and test it again by doing the sudo nginx-t if everything is working fine you see no errors we can continue to the next step which is sudo systemctl restart nginx restarting it means that the nginx will see oh that's a new configuration file it will read this and overwrite the old one and finally uh, we can now say that engine x is properly configured we wouldn't need to have port 5000 open we can delete this with sudo ufw delete allow 5000 now we can give every give the access to the engine x server to help us uh, run things we can say allow sudo ufw allow engine x full and after everything you should be able to go to your domain online just like that no colon 5000 at the end whatsoever and see if you're unable to access the website after doing all the steps uh, don't worry there are some things that i have came across while i was first configuring and deploying my own site the first issue the, er the errors really the errors so to view the errors in error log do a command called sudo less dash var dash log dash engine x dash error dot log and see what is going on and if it's a permission issue want to try giving uh, permissions to the files uh, debug from there usually it's the socket file what you can say is sudo chmod 755 dash home dash your username for me that would be salad try that out press enter and reload the page again otherwise you might see google the error message see if you can't figure it out yourself hello again and we are back so the website works and the issue was because um, the dns wasn't propagated there are sites where we can check this so if everything is set up correctly but you still cannot go to the site uh, don't panic 
you might have to wait for a while to get the site up and running. You can see that this site is not secure and that is not good. So we have to secure it. We're going to secure our application. Use let and crit. How are we going to do that? Firstly, we are going to install sudo at install python 3 dash third bot dash engine x. Wait for a bit. Okay. And now we have to tell them what is our domain. sudo third bot engine x dash d. And our domain is literal nonsense dot law and also your both www dot literal nonsense I hope I spelled that right dot law give a email address just now it wasn't um, I wasn't able to successfully receive a certificate I didn't do anything to um, rectify it um, maybe it's because it's not propagated to the servers. I wait. I waited for a few minutes and um, it's working. Let's go back to our page and you can see that it is not secure. And now when we type HTTPS colon dash dash, it should say it's secure. Let's, let's see, let's hope. Okay, and now we see that it is secure. And yeah, this is how you secure your website. That is all.